Well, this is gonna be a weird one. Even in the US, a boy and his blob is known as an odd game. But there's a whole extra layer of weirdness when it comes to the Famicom version. First off, this is one of the very few Jalico games on the Famicom where Nintendo manufactured the cartridge. I suspect it's because their own throughput was being used up for another game at the time. Jalico published three games during the 1990 holiday season, and they only manufactured one of those cartridges themselves. The second thing is that Fushigi no Blobby was a very late arrival on the Famicom. A Boy and His Blob was published in the US in the early part of 1990, actually getting a lot of hype and magazine coverage from it being demoed at the CES show that January. For whatever reason, it became a massive hit on the NES, so it was obvious why they'd want to go for a Famicom release. The weird thing is, this isn't the first Fushigi no Blobby game to be released in Japan. The Game Boy sequel was actually released in Japan about a month before this game. In fact, the Game Boy game was released in Japan six months before it was released in the US. The Japanese subtitle of the Famicom game is Blabonia no Kiki, which just is a translation of the English subtitle Trouble in Blabonia. Fushigi no Blabi is an action-adventure game. It's the story of a young boy who finds an amorphous alien, befriends the blob by giving it candy, and then aids it in freeing its home world. It was created by David Crane, who also made Pitfall for the Atari 2600. The thing is, Fushigi Nub Lobby strongly resembles Pitfall 2, the sequel where you explored a huge, wide-open cavern. Of course, there are a lot of differences. Top of the list, you can't jump. The B button calls the blob to you, and the A button throws candy. If the candy lands on the blob, it turns into an object, a different object for each flavor of candy. You hit select to rotate through those flavors. One of the challenges in releasing Fushigi na Blobby was that the candy in the English version were all references or puns. That kind of wordplay just doesn't translate properly. And so in Japanese, all of the flavors are different. And I'm afraid a lot of these references are beyond me. Apple-flavored candy turns the blob into a ladder. That's your primary method for traveling upward. The ladder will pass through solid objects, so you can go through floors when you climb it. Pear-flavored candy turns the blob into a bridge. It'll slide along the ground for a little bit in the direction you are facing, and cover up some gaps. Coconut-flavored candy turns the blob into, well, a coconut. You can walk on top of the coconut to pick it up, and then press A to bowl it. Cola-flavored candy turns the blob into a bubble that you can ride in. It will let you explore underwater areas and climb out of the water when you reach the edge. You have to be careful while in the bubble because bumping into sharp objects will pop it. Curry candy turns the blob into a blowtorch which is used to burn up a handful of objects. For any of the items that can be carried that the blob turns into, you pick them up by running over them and put them down again by hitting A. Because the curry is only used in a very small number of places, you can use those candies to precisely position the blob if you need to. Cinnamon candy turns the blob into a jack. It can push items from below. Mushroom candy turns the blob into an umbrella. At least it's easy to understand the connection there. Carrying the umbrella will let you fall great distances. Normally you can only fall about one screen height, so you have to rely on the umbrella to go down further than that. Pudding candy turns the blob into a trampoline. That's your other option for going up. Walk on top of it and you start bouncing. Press up while you're bouncing and you'll go higher. You can bounce up to five screens high. You can go left and right while you're falling and hopefully land on a platform. Champagne flavored jelly beans turn the blob into a rocket. You have to use it on the surface to fly to the blob's home world, which will be the second half of the game. Honey jelly beans turn the blob into a hummingbird. That's more useful than it might seem at first glance, because when you get off that trampoline on a high platform, you need to toss one of these down so that the blob will fly up to you. Coffee candy is the blob's least favorite. It won't eat that one at all. Finally, donut candy turns the blob into a hole. Kind of like a portable hole from a Warner Brothers cartoon. You can use it to fall through solid platforms, but you have to be careful when recalling the blob after using it because it will fall straight down before it reverts to blob form, 
And if you're standing below it, that means you fall through the hole again. You hit the B button to revert the blob back from its transformed state. The first portion of the game has you descend into the caverns below the city to look for treasure. You use that treasure at the drugstore on the surface to buy vitamins that you use as ammunition. Once you feel you're armed and ready, then you can fly off to Blobonia, and then make your way through the traps to confront the Emperor. Technically, you don't have to get the vitamins. It's quite possible to navigate Blobonia without them. That means a skilled player can beat this game in under 5 minutes without even really speedrunning. Besides the treasure, which also acts as continue points if you die, you can find sacks of candy that will replenish your stocks. You can't hurt the enemies that you'll encounter in the caverns, you just have to go underneath them. Unfortunately, the window for doing that is tiny. You've got a lot of inertia when you run around, and it takes you a long time to stop. But you have to be very precise to get under these bouncing snakes. Generally speaking, the controls are just frustrating. You don't move with precision, it can be hard to get the blob where you want it to be, and handling things like ladders or the trampoline is much harder than it should be. And then there are the environments. They are vast, and they are also barren. There's only about a dozen actual challenges in the caverns below the city. The rest of the difficulty is just trying to find where anything is. I know that when I played this one as a kid, I never found my way into the caverns because there's no hint that you would even have to go there. Fushigi na Blobby is a controversial game. On the one hand, you have the genuinely impressive blob. It's adorable, and it should be fun to play around with. But the environment and puzzle design are so actively hostile towards players that it sucks the joy out of just playing with the blob. And similar to the US, the people who remember this game love the blob and hate playing it. Unfortunately, Japan never got the much better sequel that came along about 20 years later. This original game is a magnificent mess. It's something to think about, go, oh, that was a pretty cool idea and then never play.